Hey, yo, everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing Buffy Season 9, Issue Number 2, Freefall, Part 2. Take a look at this comic cover right here. Now, I said in my issue number one for season nine that I was ready for the wounds to heal, to put the atrocity that was the ending of season eight behind me, and to get back into the Buffy universe. And while issue number one wasn't bad, it was an okay issue, it really didn't do what I wanted it to do. There's two reasons why issue number one really wasn't that good in my eyes. First reason is that people say that it was an issue to reestablish these characters, to reintroduce them to us. But why? I don't need to be reintroduced to Dawn or Xander or to Spike. The only one that really needs to be reestablished or reintroduced is Buffy because she's the character that's been affected the most by this. One could argue Willow, but I would have to disagree because Willow's pretty much the same as she was at the ending of Season 8. So we really didn't need to be reintroduced to all the characters the way that we did. Second thing is, if we're going to reintroduce the characters, let's do it in a productive way. Not with Buffy running around, getting drunk, dancing on top of tables, having a party, and then having a hangover. It, first of all, it feels a little out of character. I know Buffy has binge drinked before, but it just doesn't seem like Buffy summers to me. Second thing is, and I hate to keep on making this comparison between Angel and Faith and Buffy, but Angel and Faith did it well. In that comic, we do need to figure out exactly what's been happening with the characters. Shit went down with Angel, and Angel has changed, and Faith has changed. However, they did it in a productive way. They were fighting, they were figuring out a case, they were establishing the, the whole entire uh, structure of the comic and how the, the series was going to go. They did it in a productive way, where Buffy just had a party. I didn't get any sense of what Season 9 was going to be like by looking at issue number 1. So then it comes to this question. Will issue number two for season nine be better? Will it actually get the ball rolling? Or will it follow the same pattern that issue number one had as being uneventful and not as enjoyable? Just going to have to wait and see. So with that said, let's actually jump into issue number two of Buffy season nine. The issue starts off with where we left off. Buffy gang served her papers by a demon to pay her student loans. This stupid plot point gets pushed away real quickly, but it establishes one thing, and that everyone has been affected by the magic leaving in this world. Not just Willow, but demons too. This poor demon just wants to be at home in his dimension, but he's stuck here now, and he has to get a job. Poor guy. I'm serious too, I feel bad for the bloke. Anyways... It does establish the fact that the world has changed and Buffy is very self-centered about it. She's only really thinking about herself in this situation. She's not thinking about how it really affected other people. While this goes down, a bunch of vampires are turning up dead. Keyword I used is dead. Not slayed, not dusted, dead. They've actually been reverted back to the human form. Why? By whom? Well, I'm not going to reveal that. But Buffy goes to investigate it, and while she is slaying a vampire, she is arrested by the police. Of course, she escapes the police, but now she is public enemy number one. So, can Buffy solve this mystery about what's happening to the vampires, consolidate what's going on with everyone not having their magical powers, and at the same time, figure out who has it out for her and avoid the police? Just going to have to read and see. Let's get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. Good. Well, finally, the story is going somewhere. I get a sense of where Season 9 is. I get a sense of what's happening, what the world is like. And in addition to that, we have an interesting story going on. These vampires are being turned human again. Um, and it, it it's a unique term because it's not like they're being killed, like staked or sunlight or decap or fire. They're legitimately being turned back into human. Now, they're dying afterwards, so that raises the question, can these people be cured from being a vampire and become a human again, or do they just die? I mean, you have to deal with the icky-dicky stuff, like, you know, putting the soul back in the body and stuff. But, I mean, it raises a big question. It's an interesting plot point. Buffy seems a little bit better in this issue. She's a bit more proactive, but at the same time, I feel as though she's still, like, a teenager. She hasn't quite grown up the way she did in the beginning of season 8. 
Um, but putting all that aside, for the most part, she's handled nicely. Spike is handled nicely in this. And on a whole, there's some pretty good action scenes. I actually also liked the interactions between the two detectives. I know they're probably not going to show up too much more, but I like seeing it from an outsider's perspective on how the world has changed. The normal everyday human seeing this world that had demons and vampires now turning back to normal, kind of. Kind of. Not totally normal. Bad. Well, like I said beforehand, although I, I'm getting a little bit more sense of who Buffy is right now, I feel as though they still have reverted her back to being kind of a kid. Buffy went through a great growing stage throughout the show, and even in Season 8, she grew a bit more. But in Season 9, it feels like she digressed a little. Just a little. The other thing that kind of bothers me, and this goes across the board with Buffy, is, and this is nothing against the issue itself, but it's just it feels like, how much bad shit can these people get put through? I mean, look at Buffy. She just gets put through some horrendously bad things. And it's like, how is she able to, like, go about her day without, like, killing herself? Same thing with the Angel. He just keeps on screwing up left and right. And how does he go on with his undead life? And I don't like... I mean, it's an interesting aspect not having magic around. But I kind of would have liked it if they kept magic around. I don't know. I do like how they're going back to basics, though. Whether or not you should get it. Actually, this issue was really good. It was entertaining. It was a lot more informative than the first issue. And it gives me hopes that Season 9 has somewhere to go. I like the fact that people are pissed off at Buffy and that she needs to take responsibilities for her actions. A lot of the blame was put on Angel. But let's be honest here. It's just as much, if not more, Buffy's fault what went on. Angel was simply doing what he could. And then getting possessed. Buffy was getting possessed too, but she did some pretty bad decisions. So I like the fact that Buffy's actually having to deal with the decisions she made. So I do recommend picking this up. It was fun. Um, you don't need to get the first issue though. Other than the fact that the first issue segues into that funny demon giving her uh, her student loans. You really don't need the first issue. Um, so Buffy, season 9, issue number 2. Good issue. I do recommend picking it up. Hopefully this hope for Season 9. This is Andrew saying peace out for now.